Hi there, I'm Lucy and welcome to the very first book review for my YouTube channel. Quick intro just to give you um, an overview of my interests so that you know the sort of books that you can expect to be reviewed on the channel. Uh, I'm a big history nerd, always have been, and there are three main topics that are of particular interest to me. The first and by far the biggest is the Second World War. Um, absolutely everything connected um, to the war I'm interested in, so not just the, the battles, the conflict itself, but the people, the main players, social conditions in countries uh, throughout the world during the course of the war. The Holocaust, you can't really read about the Second World War without reading about the Holocaust as well. It's, it's inevitable, they're so very closely connected. Um, the history of the Third Reich, everything and anything to do with the Second World War, I have a big interest in. So a lot of the books you find being reviewed on this channel are going to be connected to the Second World War in some shape, way or form. Second subject of interest uh, is the First World War. Again, this is very closely connected to the Second World War, as without the first, it's highly unlikely that we would have had the second. And then the third subject of interest for me, I'm only just starting to get into this a little bit more, um, is the Vietnam War. Um, as I say, I'm only just starting to develop more of an interest in this one, so you'll probably find that books connected to Vietnam uh, won't be reviewed until a little bit further down the line once I've been able to uh, catch up on some of my reading. So there you go, my main uh, subjects of interest. Perhaps not the most chirpiest of things to be interested in, but there you go, that's what interests me. Uh, so I hope you find the books that I review on here uh, in relation to those topics uh, of interest and perhaps you even feel inspired to go and track down some of the titles yourself uh, and, and have a read. So um, yeah, I hope you get something uh, out of the reviews on this channel. So the first book I've chosen to review here is one that I got as a present, uh, Christmas Just Gone. I'm very easy when it comes to uh, buying presents for, um, for Christmas and birthdays etc. Buy me a book and I'm absolutely ecstatic, I couldn't want anything else, so I'm very cheap when it comes to uh, buying presents for. And this uh, this first book, as I say, I got as a Christmas present last year um, and I devoured it in just under a week. I thought it was so good, so I that was one of the reasons why I chose it as, uh, as the first book to review for the channel. The Soldier Who Came Back. Now, this is about two British men, Fred Foster and Anthony Coulthard who came from very different walks of life in Britain um, and their lives, their paths crossed when they became prisoners of war in one of the German stalags. Um, they were captured early in 1940 um, and they built up uh, a very good friendship while they were prisoners uh, in the stalag. They were sent to um, one of the stalags in Poland uh, in a place called Turan and from there they planned to escape. Um, they did it in a very unconventional way. Um, instead of going around in order to reach the Swiss border, in order to get back home to the UK, uh, they went through direct into enemy territory. They went through the heart of Germany, through Berlin, in order to get to the border. So um, they did it in a very unconventional and a very dangerous way. So um, that is a big intrigue as to the, the path that they chose to use as their escape. Um, on the whole, of course, it's a pretty serious book, to say the least. Um, the planning of their escape, um, the escape itself, obviously, and the inevitable aftermath. It does have a couple of humorous moments, though, I have to say. Um, there was one section in particular, um, when they reach Berlin, they're, um, they're on a street and they're trying to decipher which of these women walking down the street could be prostitutes, as they've been told that prostitutes can provide them with connections to the underground resistance, which would aid them in trying to get back to the UK um, so that's that's quite a funny moment within the book but, but on the whole it's, it's a very serious subject matter uh, needless to say. Uh, I'm just going to read you a little bit of an extract from the book this is from early on this is from chapter two and this um, it comes up to the point where the two men meet in Tehran in the camp in Tehran for the very first time. In the 21st century the cattle truck trains are most familiar to us from horrific documentaries about the transportation of Europe's Jews to the Nazi death camps, but they were also used to carry prisoners of war. No more than 40 men were supposed to travel inside each truck, so Antony was quite lucky, but the Germans frequently crammed in 50, 60 or more. They were often locked in for the best part of a day or even longer. The conditions grew hellish. There were no windows, only a few narrow slits a couple of inches high and about a foot wide. So there was air, but not nearly enough, and it soon became stale and futoid, futid. 
nor were there any toilet facilities, not even a bucket. People resorted to urinating or defecating in their helmets or their boots and throwing it out through the slit. Those with dysentery couldn't always manage even that, and the floor was sometimes awash with diarrhoea. The humiliation must have been intense. Their dehumanisation from free men to captives had begun. Sleep, the balm they all needed so badly, was hard to come by. The overcrowding meant that lying down was impossible, even sitting wasn't easy. If you were fortunate, you might snatch a nap, squashed into some tight corner, prop shoulder to shoulder with somebody else. But the noise and shaking of the train, the stench of faeces and the hunger echoing in your belly might well put pay to that. For the fastidious middle-class boy from the Villa Vita and the Queen's College Oxford, it must have been grim. The poignancy of his situation would hardly have escaped him. Antony was back in Germany, but the country he had eagerly embraced not so long ago now had him in a totally involuntary grip. The land of Beethoven had taken on a different face, though on the surface, of course, it looked much the same. When the prison train reached Marburg, where he had spent a student summer just three years before, he caught glimpses through the slit of the hilltop castle he had known so well. It was a dreadful way to return. Here, miraculously, the prisoners were allowed out of the cattle truck to stretch their legs, find a tree to urinate behind, and be given watery coffee served by Red Cross nurses. One wonders if he recognised any local faces. A girl he'd once spoken to in a beer keller? A German guard who lived in the street where Anthony had once lodged? It would seem that at this point in the trek east, he had a stroke of luck. Somehow infiltrating a column of the sick who were being sent on ahead in lorries. By this means, he reached his destination more quickly, and safely than so many of those who started the march with him across the dusty roads of Belgium. Nevertheless, the experience had marked him. He never forgot those who had never finished the journey, their dead bodies hauled out of the cattle truck, and left for someone, anyone, to bury. We shall all long remember the hunger, the thirst, the heat and fatigue, the cold nights, the cues for a mouthful of soup, the stampede for water. But his destination was not what he expected. This prison transport, a month the earliest of World War II, had gone right across Germany and over its eastern border into Nazi-occupied Poland. It did not stop till it reached the old medieval city of Turan on the, on the river Vistula. Here, in great haste, a POW camp had been established in a ring of old forts on the outskirts of the town. When Antony Courtard was marched into his new billet, it must have looked bleak beyond imagining. Barbed wire, armed sentries, swastikas draped everywhere. The only cheer for the new arrivals was the welcome of those British Tommies who'd got here before them, many from the catastrophic Norwegian campaign. These men, too, had had a rough journey in this miserable, to this miserable place, and knew only too well how exhausted, hungry and desolate their new companions must be. As best they could, they reached out to give some help and comfort, especially to those who seemed most frail. A cheery handshake, a pat on the back, a corny joke. Welcome to the Hotel Turan. The porter will take your luggage. One of these old hands went up to Lance, Cor Lance Corporal Coulthard. Hello there, he said. My name's Fred Froster. You stick with me, chum. I'll get you fixed up. Now, the vast majority of the story is about the two men, Fred Foster and Antony Coulthard, but as you've inevitably guessed from the title, the soldier who came back, only one of them, unfortunately, ever made it back home again. I'm not going to spoil it for you by um, telling you exactly what happened um, along the way and the aftermath um, from the escape. Um, so if you do want to head off and have a go at reading the book yourself, I won't spoil it too much for you, um, but it's, it's pretty obvious, as I say, from the title to um, to gather that th both of them didn't unfortunately return to England um, after the war. So as I say, I won't go into too much detail to avoid spoiling it for you as to the circumstances as to why only one of them ended up making it back home again. Um, but overall, I found it to be a really great, interesting, but highly emotional read as well, um, especially when you get to the point um, after the, the escape, what happens when they reach uh, the border to make it over um, Switzerland in order to try and get home. By the end of the book, I found that I had a, a bit of a lump in my throat and um, the circumstances into which one of the guys didn't make it back home um, really left me very sad and, and also the aftermath for the other man as well who survived and what his life was like after the war when he returned home and um, and his reflections on, on what had happened both to him and to his comrade who he became very close to both during their initial time in the camp in Tehran 
um, and also over the course of their attempt to escape uh, to make it back home to England. So, as I say, really great read. It's quite a short book. It's it's not one of my uh, my, my longest ones by any means. Um, it's just over two hundred and seventy pages, uh, which might sound like a lot to some people, but for me. Um, I got managed to get through that in no time at all, especially as because I found it such a great read, really interesting, and it's really interesting to hear um, what two men who decided to go right through the heart of enemy territory to try and escape. When you would think they would try to go uh, around it, even if it was the long way round, in order to avoid the chances of their being caught. Um, there's a couple of diagrams in there as well with with maps of the camp at Turan um, to give an idea of the layout and how they plan to uh, get out of the camp in order to reach. Um, open ground in order to start making their their way towards uh, towards Berlin. So overall, really great read, great interest in, in both of the men who were involved, never to be great interest in, in the escape itself, their journey, and sad interest, I have to say, in, in the aftermath and what became of the two men. So I do highly recommend that one. It only came out last year, 2018, so it is relatively new. Um, so yeah, a really great read. I do highly recommend it. So uh, do search it out on Amazon or, or your local bookshop or wherever you like to buy your books from. Um, and I hope you found it um, as interesting and as emotional um, and inspiring as well as I did. That's one thing that also came out of it. It's a, it's a great inspiration um, to see the attitude of the men, not just towards their determination to escape and to try and make it back home, um, but their attitude when they were at, at, during their time in the prison camp in their attempts to try and, and lift their spirits and try and make the most out of a very, very terrible situation um, which we today really couldn't have any a sort of idea as to what it must have been like uh, to be prisoner in the camp and in the conditions, um, not just the physical conditions but emotional and moral conditions as well, how they must have felt um, not knowing if they were going to ever be able to see, uh, see home again, um, their families and their friends. So very, very good read, albeit quite emotional it was for me anyway so if you do track it down and uh, and give it a go i hope you find i hope you get something out of it um as i very much did so that's it so that's the uh, the very first book review for the channel i hope you found it of interest and i hope you'll be uh, intrigued enough to come and visit the channel again to see what else um i i get up to with my reading on here i'm gonna aim to hopefully put a book review up once a week roughly thereabouts so uh, there should be plenty more to come in pretty quick succession so i'll hope you return to see what else uh, i'm dev devouring book wise but until then happy reading to you bye bye